Hey everyone, Ronnie Chavez here for another parkour free running tutorial. Today's tutorial is going to be on the front handspring or the rail spring, depending on what the object is you're doing it on. Now there's a few ways to learn this trick, so I'm going to go over all these different ways. The first one, you can learn it on just flat grass, if you feel comfortable just learning it on grass. The other way is off ledges, onto either grass or bark or a softer surface, or on a straight rail, whatever you feel comfortable with. But personally, I learned this on flat ground, so that's what we're going to get started with. So let's do it. So basically, the front handspring is like a flip, but you're using your arms to propel yourself forward. So you're going from feet to hands to feet again. You don't want to go into it like a front flip. It won't work at all if you think front flip technique trying to do a front handspring. What you want to think about is that you're getting power off the ground for both your jumping leg and the planting of your arms. So what I'm gonna first do is I'm going to set up like I'm going to do a handstand. If you ever just practice a handstand, you're basically just putting your arms out in front of you, kicking your back leg to kick up into the stand position. So that's basically the starting motion, only it's going to be a lot faster and you're going to jump and kick harder as you do it. So as you go into that motion, you're going to be reaching forward and you want to keep your arms strong and rigid. And as you plant your arms on the ground, you're going to be kicking this leg up to help get you lift and also flip you over. And then at the same time, you're going to, as your jumping leg leaves the ground, they're going to come together and you're going to reach with your feet. You're going to pull everything tight so it helps flip you over quickly. So a lot of people will run into the problem where they let their arms bend and they think you're supposed to jump with your arms. So you want to make sure you keep them stiff and strong, not hyper extended, but just out in front of you holding a sturdy position, just like a handstand. And you're actually going to be pushing against the ground, against your momentum to spring yourself upward. So that's the blocking motion, kind of like I've talked about in previous flip tutorials. Just like you need a block with your legs on a normal front flip in the front handspring, you're going to be blocking with your arms on the ground, which is going to be transferring that momentum into height and flip. So something you can practice to get more power is to just do a handstand jump. So as I go into a handstand, I'm going to practice pushing against my momentum to just kind of bounce up. It's that type of motion that's going to give you a spring, but you're going to let your body keep flipping over instead of just stopping it and doing a jump. So for some people it can be difficult learning front handsprings on flat ground. It'll take a lot of practice because you really have to learn to time the jump with the planting of your arms to get the proper spring and flip. But if you add a little bit of height or drop, it can help you learn it a bit quicker and allow you to practice the technique better without having to worry about falling on your back or butt every time. So here I just have this little curb with some bark that will provide a little bit of cushion, but you still want to be careful. You still want to make sure you're not going to be in a position where you can land your head back on the curb or get hurt. So you really want to, you know, even if you feel safe, just make sure you're extra cautious when learning new tricks. So when doing it off of height, the technique is basically the same, just depending on how much height you have, you'll want to slow down your rotation or speed it up. So this curb is just high enough that I can comfortably land perfectly straight up. On flat ground I have to force it a little bit harder and if I were to go to higher ledges then I'd have to slow myself down a lot because then once you start getting higher it's really easy to over rotate on front handsprings so you really want to be careful. You can also get more power in front handsprings if you have more speed or momentum going into them but you don't want to go so fast that your arms can't handle the pressure so again you want to work into it building up speed as you practice it. So you've learned the front handspring or the handspring off of ledges and you're ready to learn the rail spring or the front handspring on obstacles. Now the thing with this trick is one thing that makes it harder is going into it but then because of the height you have it's easier to land. So it's kind of a win-lose situation. So jumping into the rail spring you really want to make sure you're jumping so that you're going to get the proper height and flip to push yourself over this handrail because if you're relying solely on body strength well, not a lot of people have the strength required to just push yourself into a handstand and flip over. So you have to really rely on momentum and coordination between your jump and the power in your arms. Now the thing with the rail spring, I told you earlier on front handsprings not to bend your arms. Well, this is a little bit different. There's different styles 
and you can bend your arms in some cases if you need to to get your body up into position to flip over. Otherwise, you can still, if you have the jump height and power, you can still keep your arms straight and it'll give you a lot of power, but it all just depends on your body type and what kind of obstacle you're doing it on. The reason you can bend your arms here is because you have the height and the fall time to allow you to flip around, whereas on flat ground, if you bend your arms, you, it'll be hard to get the height to make the flip all the way around. So similar in technique, I'm going to run up, use my momentum, jump off one leg so that I can use this leg to help kick me up in the air and flip me over as I go into it. And then I'm gonna be pushing against the handrail. So my momentum is pushing against my arms, allowing my body to come up and then kick over. You can also, with handsprings, jump off of two feet. You just have to make sure you really jump up and tuck into it fast because you're not going to have that kicking leg to give you as much width. Another thing you wanna be careful of when doing handsprings on rails is that if you are gonna come in close to it, sometimes it's if you don't have the momentum and you're pushing up into it and you push straight up, I've seen people go straight up and then come back down on their back or their head. And so you really wanna make sure you just have the momentum and push to get over it. Sometimes as your body's coming up and over before you spring completely, you can even fall a little bit so that as you're springing, you're pushing yourself away from the rail you're jumping off of. All right, so that was a rail spring tutorial. Hope you guys are safe and have fun learning this trick because it's a really fun trick. But I also wanted to ask you guys what you think of my new little difficulty meter I've added on all the thumbnails of my tutorial videos. Let me know if you think that's helpful at all, if it's kind of cool, or if you think it's just lame, let me know. But otherwise, be sure to subscribe and thanks for watching.